this image is a plasmid map. It shows restriction sites for two different restriction enzymes, ECOR1 and BAMH1. This question comes from my Biomania AP Bio Preparation System. You can get that content on the website, or you can access the same content through my Biomania app for iPhone and Android. You get two units with a free download, and then you can unlock all of the rest of the content with an in-app purchase. Pause the video to study this question, then hit play to see my answer. Okay, so how do restriction enzymes work? Restriction enzymes, also called restriction endonucleases, are enzymes that can find a specific sequence of nucleotide bases within DNA and make a cut that cuts the DNA apart. Here you see a restriction enzyme called HIND3 finding its restriction site, the sequence it recognizes, and cutting the DNA at that specific point. Cutting up DNA in this way creates fragments of DNA that are called restriction fragments. Part 2. Using restriction enzymes and a technique called gel electrophoresis, you can create what's called a DNA fingerprint. Here's how. Electrophoresis is a way of separating molecules by size and electrical charge. The basic idea is that the molecules that you're analyzing are forced by electrical attraction and repulsion to move through a porous gel. Remember that DNA has a sugar phosphate backbone. All of those phosphate groups have negative charges. So if you place DNA in a gel in an electrophoresis chamber and turn on the electrical current, the DNA will be drawn toward the positive side of the chamber and away from the negative side. Why? Because opposite charges attract and like charges repel. The gel impedes the movement of the DNA fragments that are moving through it in such a way that the small fragments move through the gel more easily than the large fragments. Therefore, in the same amount of time, small fragments will move further than large ones. The result, DNA fragments that are sorted by size. This diagram shows three DNA fingerprints. As you can see, each fingerprint is a pattern of lines. In the first one, A, there's just one piece of DNA. It's a big piece and it didn't move very far. In the DNA fingerprint shown in lane B, there are two fragments. Fragment two is bigger and fragment five down here is smaller. In lane C, there's a third DNA fingerprint with three fragments. The biggest is three and the smallest is six. In the third part of the question, you were asked to do this. Pause if you want to take another look. Plasmids, to review, are small loops of DNA found in bacteria. These loops of DNA are outside the main bacterial chromosome. They can carry genes just like any other piece of DNA, and they're widely used in genetic engineering. This plasmid has one restriction site for the restriction enzyme ECOR1, and three for the restriction enzyme BAMH1. If you mix the plasmid with ECOR1, then the ECOR1 would cut the plasmid open at this point and create a piece of DNA that's 20 kilobases big. Kilo, 1,000, 20 kilobases means 20,000 bases, 20,000 nucleotides in length. How do you know it's 20 kilobases? First of all, right in the center of the plasmid map, you can see the name of the plasmid and its size, 20 kilobases. But if that wasn't there, the map tells you the distance between each restriction site. There are three kilobases between these two restriction sites, eight between these two, six between these two, and three between these two. Just add three plus eight plus six plus three, which equals 20. If you electrophoresis this DNA, then you'd wind up with a pattern that's shown in lane A. That single bar is DNA that's 20,000 nucleotides long. That big piece of DNA didn't move very far through the gel, and that's because it's so big. If you mix the plasmid with just BAMH1, you'd cut the plasmid into three fragments. One would be three kilobases big, the second would be 11 kilobases big, and that one is a little tricky. Remember that we're not cutting at the ECOR1 restriction site because we didn't add that restriction enzyme. So we're gonna have to add together this three kilobase portion to this eight kilobase portion for a total of 11 kilobases for the next fragment. The third fragment would be six kilobases big. That's the DNA fingerprint you would see in lane B. 
Now, imagine mixing the plasmid with both restriction enzymes, EcoR1 and BAMH1, simultaneously. Think about how they cut up the plasmid. You'd cut two fragments that are three kilobases big, another that's eight kilobases big, and a last one that's six kilobases big. And that's the DNA fingerprint you'd see in lane C. Note that there are two fragments that are three kilobases big, and there'd be more DNA at that location, and that's represented in this diagram by a thicker line. To get ready for the AP exam, you should be doing many questions like this every day. And you can do this using the Biomania AP exam preparation system that'll get you a four or a five on this year's AP bio exam. We're gonna make it, we're gonna crush it, we're gonna do super well. So stick with it, I'm right there behind you. I'll see you soon. AP bio review.